Hi guys, so in today's video about party planning, I'm going to be talking about food and um, like kind of laying out your food. So one thing that I suggest, especially if you're going to have uh, multiple parties over the coming years of maybe two dozen or fewer people, so just kind of intimate gatherings, either Christmas parties or birthdays, whatever you're going to do, I really suggest buying um, cater packs of dishes and um, maybe wine glasses if you serve wine at your parties. So we did this. We have, um, we got like salad size plates, two sets of them, a dozen each. They come with their own carrier and I think we got them at Cost Plus World Market right around Christmas time when they went on sale. And they've been a great investment. We use them at multiple parties. And besides just saving on the cost of paper plates that are going to get used once and then thrown away, I think they add a certain kind of formality to your parties and, um, they're definitely easier, I think, for adults to use. You don't have to worry about them, like, bending in half and spelling. And then if you're going to have kids at your parties, you can always still buy the paper plates for the children to use. If you're going to do a lot of parties off-site, you know, at a park or something like that, um, if you're going to, like, rent a space and have to bring your own plates and cups, you know, I wouldn't necessarily encourage you to use real plates and cups because you're just going to have to transport that back to your home and they're going to be messy with cake and stuff smeared on them. But... If you are hosting parties in your house, I think that that's a good investment. Um, that's what we did. We just keep them down in our in our garage. We kept them in the original boxes, so they just stack up really nice. And uh, that's worked really well for us, especially where the wine glasses are concerned, because um, at Christmas parties, we have plenty of um, wine glasses and champagne goblets. And um, that's really come in handy, so we don't have to get those plastic ones that are chinky and really cheap. So... That's um, that's just kind of a tip for me. And then also, especially if you're going to be having kids parties, and this is whether it's in your house or, you know, at a park or something like that because it travels well, is getting one of those beverage dispensers. You can get them at Target. You can get them at places like um, Home Goods, which is, it's like the home decor version of um, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, that kind of a thing. Um, those are great because they just have the spigot on the front. You put a, like, punch or whatever in them and uh, they kind of feed everybody. <laughs> um, we got ours with a little stand because I didn't want it to necessarily have to be on the edge of the table so that people could fill up their cups. Um, this way it raises it, you know, five to six inches so you can get your cup under there. So I preferred the ones with the stand. You can also get them at Costco, I think. I think I've seen them there as well. So that's been a really good investment. We've used it at every party and, um, and then you can just hang a label to let them know what it is. Usually we do a mixture of equal parts pink lemonade and limeade, and then we add Sprite to make it like kind of bubbly and fizzy. And if you make it in advance, you can freeze ice cubes of um, pink lemonade or limeade, and that way you're not watering down your drink as the ice melts, because it's just adding more pink lemonade to the mix. If you're gonna do kind of like a lemonade, I suggest getting a lemon and slicing it up and throwing like fresh lemon slices in there. Um, that looks really, really nice. So I think your serving ware is a place where you can also emphasize your color scheme where you can really kind of go against it. So um, like I think I said in a blog earlier this week, our Christmas party is usually uh, blue tones and silver with some kind of sparkle and stuff. So we have um, little small Dutch oven things that we use usually serve like mini meatballs and stuff like that in, and those are in a blue color. I have plenty of serving trays. I got them at Crate and Barrel and they are beautiful, beautiful. They look kind of like sea glass in a way. Um, so they're see-through, they are substantial in weight, they're very, very beautiful. They weren't very expensive, they were definitely less than $20 a piece. And um, I've used them over and over at all sorts of different parties because, you know, they don't have a color. So I like clear things, I think that's a great way to go to make it multi-purpose. Also you could do just like a neutral. So then as far as food is concerned, obviously take your guests and their dietary um, restrictions into account. You can include a little box on your invitation so that they can let you know if they're avoiding certain things or allergic to certain things. It's especially important if you're inviting children to your house, know if they have any dietary restrictions. We have a friend that's a vegetarian, so if I'm going to make something like a lasagna, I always make a loaf size pan just for him that's totally veggie, cooked separate, prepared separate, um, so that he has something to eat. Or I also always try to offer side dishes that are either hearty enough. For example, at Hannah's first birthday party, we really wanted to incorporate food that she loved because she just started eating adult food, I guess. <laughs> and um, 
Uh, so we wanted her to be able to eat everything that was served at, his, at her party. And we also kind of wanted it to be, you know, bite size, small size, because we weren't having a sit down dinner. People were just milling around and mingling. So we did slider hamburgers, because she loves hamburgers. We did um, chicken nuggets, because there was going to be a lot of children there. We also did cups of macaroni and cheese, which was vegetarian friendly, and the macaroni and cheese was awesome. It was like a five cheese adult awesome macaroni and cheese that Hannah also loved. And then we did little cups of uh, banana pudding with like Nilla wafers. Uh, we had cones of french fries, so they were like individually served and people could hold them and they were really easy to eat. And then we had lots and lots of different dipping sauces. I think that's all we did for food and then obviously birthday cake. Yeah. So he could eat the macaroni and cheese, the french fries, and the banana pudding. We offered to make um, like a veggie burger for him, but he was fine. He, I guess he had kind of eaten a little bit before the party. So we always try to accommodate our guests, especially when it's either a uh, way of eating, like vegetarian or vegan, or especially an, uh, an allergy. That's a really big deal that needs to be taken into consideration. <laughs> I'm listening to Hannah out there. She's talking about blue birthday something. Now for Hannah's second birthday party, I had family in town and I didn't want to spend all day slaving in the, in the kitchen. I also was having a really, really hard time coming up with what to eat because it needed to be something that I could transport easily to the park. So it needed to be something that can be served at room temperature, not a lot of muss and fuss. And it was just a small party. It was just family and friends. And so what we ended up doing, uh, we <laughs> I took the totally cheater way out of it, but it turned out great. I went to Costco, I got a deli platter of their sandwich pinwheel roll-ups, and um, we had potato salad, watermelon slices, chips and dip, and something else. And it was basically just your basic picnic fare, and everyone was happy, and it tasted good, and ultimately, the food was not a big portion of that party. Everyone just ate real quick and then we went right back out to the playground. So I knew that it wasn't going to be a big focus of this party, so I didn't want to... <laughs> you guys hear <laughs> Booty music is when Hannah farts. She finds it really hilarious. We probably should work on that because she started saying it in public the other day. Anyway... <laughs> Um, so kind of know if you want food to be a big aspect of your party or not. We were having it at dinner time, so obviously we wanted to feed people, but um, like I said, the activities and stuff that were going on were more important in this particular party. Whereas her first birthday party, where everyone was mingling around, the food was a much more central focus, and so I put a lot more energy into it. Um, at the Christmas parties, we usually do lots of heavy appetizers, and then um, I also have one of those three-tier like appetizer trays. Basically, it's just kind of like a wire frame, and then it, you put three dinner-sized plates on it. That's really great if you're going to do like a Christmas-type party and have lots of different desserts. I usually do a dessert table at the Christmas party, and um, like having three different types of cookies or whatever stacked on always is a crowd pleaser. One last thing about food, and it's really more about birthday cake. I made Hannah a smash cake, and I had someone ask earlier in the week, what is a smash cake? A smash cake is basically just a smaller cake that just the baby eats from, and um, usually, you know, when they have, especially like at their first birthday, when they're a little crazy, and they don't necessarily know how to eat with, the, you know, a fork and spoon and stuff, they just get messy, and they just kind of rip into the cake, and frosting kind of goes everywhere, and so... Um, you don't want to present them with the actual cake because they will just make a mess and <laughs> make it inedible for everybody else. So the new trend, not so new, has been making a smaller cake or a cupcake or something that's just for the baby. And um, that's commonly referred to as a smash cake. So for Hannah's first birthday party, I went all out on the cake. I did, um, I did a rainbow cake, which I mentioned was the basis for like the theme of her party. I did a Butter, homemade buttercream frosting with a ribbon detail thing. It was beautiful, beautiful cake. And I did the same thing for her smash cake. I just made it a little smaller. The problem was um, we stripped Hannah basically naked down to a diaper before she had her cake. And she just went after it. She thought it was great. However, she started smearing the frosting on her and she got really red and whelpy. And I don't know if it was from all the butter. I don't know if she just had super sensitive skin at the time. I don't really know what the deal was probably a combination of the two. If I had it to do over again, I would have just frosted her cake with like a Cool Whip. <laughs> Even though it sounds kind of weird. Um, she didn't necessarily need all that frosting 
and Cool Whip would have mimicked the same thing in pictures. It would have tasted fine to her, but it wouldn't have been as heavy as a rich buttercream frosting. This is especially true when you buy a cake from a bakery. We all know that their frosting is super duper thick. So um, if you wanted to avoid that, just think of kind of how the baby is going to respond to it. Um, I didn't mind her eating the actual cake portion of it, but if I could have saved her all the buttercream in retrospect, I would have switched to a Cool Whip frosting instead. So I think that's about it for food. I wanted to keep tonight super short. Um, minimal editing. <laughs> Yesterday's was a bear. So tomorrow I'm going to be posting a video with uh, your guys' top 10 viewer tips and anything else I can think of between now and then. And uh, that will conclude this series on party planning. Thanks so much for watching all the videos. I really appreciate it. I've had a lot of people comment that their child's birthday is coming up in the next week or month and uh, they've learned a lot from these videos and I really appreciate it. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and uh, your party will be even better than mine. Have a great day, guys.